I'm Sebastian St. James. Here is your car. I'm sorry, the picture is dated next Tuesday at 4 p.m. My mistake. Here is your car. The question is, should you buy car insurance for your car? Considering we know what's going to happen to your car next Tuesday, then yes, probably you should. Here is a rose bush outside the front of your house. Should you buy rose bush insurance? No, probably not. I don't know too many people who renew their rose bush insurance each year. This is your house. Oh, sorry, that photo seems to be dated next Friday at 5.22 p.m. My mistake. This is your house. As a courtesy, you'll notice I've actually blurred you out in the photo. Should you buy home insurance? Well, yeah, probably you should. And because you never know when a car and your home may become better acquainted, then it's best to be prepared. You know, just saying. This is your goldfish. Should you buy a goldfish insurance? Okay, you probably think, Sebastian, you're just making this up, goldfish insurance. <laughs> and you'd be wrong. Best pet insurance plans for goldfish in 2022. When we think of common pets, cats and dogs are usually what come to mind. Many people choose more exotic or unusual pets, such as goldfish. I would not say a goldfish is exotic, but there you go, goldfish insurance. Right, goldfish insurance. Exactly how much does a goldfish actually cost? Well, I looked it up. Right now on Gumtree in Wembley, Western Australia, there are five rosy barbed fish, which is a type of a goldfish, with a goldfish bowl, with food, and with fake plants. For how much? Four dollars. Goldfish insurance, really? So what have we discovered? Some insurances are definitely well worth it. Others are just gimmicks. And how to tell the difference is a good question. In this video, I've made it blindingly obvious what are good insurances and what are basically a waste of your time. In the real world, though, it's not so simple. Here is your car. Oh, the clear coat seems to be peeling off. Hmm. Should you be buying comprehensive or third party insurance for this vehicle? On one hand, quite clearly my car is worth nothing. And so having comprehensive may be a waste of time. I just want to insure the other driver. But then on the other hand, if I have third party insurance, then I have to actually be the one who chases up the other insurance company. And what happens if he doesn't have insurance? It can be a nightmare. So sometimes just getting comprehensive insurance, even if your car is a bit of a junker, can be the easier route. It's not really clear, is it? Here is your flat. This is everything you own. Maybe you're a student, I'm thinking. So you have a bed, a desk, a bike. Yeah, you definitely are a student. And uh, yeah, a bit Spartan. Should you be buying contents insurance? Well, you basically don't own much, but then maybe your bike can get stolen. It's really hard to say. This is you. I'm sorry, I seem to have put in the wrong photo by mistake. This is you. Ah, oh, yes, I've got the right photo this time. Should you be buying health insurance? Uninsured Americans could be facing nearly $75,000 in medical bills if hospitalized for the coronavirus. Fortunately, in Australia, we have Medicare. Now, it's not a perfect system, but often it saves us from having massive bills. The question remains, should an Australian have private health care cover or should you rely on the public health care system? Well, there's pros and cons. It's really hard to say. Insurance companies have what they call a benefit expense ratio. This ratio is the proportion of money that they pay out in claims versus the amount that they're getting in. From your point of view, you're paying your premiums year after year. The benefit to you is getting the payout for the insurance company. No, it's the other way around. Your payout is an expense and it's the premiums that they want. As far as the insurance company is concerned, pay your premiums, shut your mouth, and don't make any claims, and they'll be happy. So this is how insurance works. You pay $100 in premiums. Your claim, well, obviously you're gonna get back a lot less than $100, but how much less? This is AIG. This is Australia's largest insurance company. The CEO of AIG is Nicholas B. Hawkins. Hi, Nick, if you're watching. Here is the remuneration of the executive directors of AIG. I think this is a few years ago, so no doubt they're being paid even more right now. Nick, as you can see, has been paid $3.3 million. Duncan Brain, $2.15 million. And Jackie Johnson, $3.268 million. That's a lot of millions going out the door for AIG. 
if you have an insurance policy with AIG or any insurer, let's face it, then you have to factor in these executive salary costs and they come out of your $100. Apparently, executives don't do all the work, although if you look at their compensation, you'd assume they do. But no, there's other staff as well. An insurance claim consultant, which I'll have many of those on average in Australia right now, earns $58,000 a year. The actuarial analysts make $64,000 a year. The job of these analysts is to figure out how much the costs are likely to be to the insurance company if they do pay out a claim. So naturally, they'd have quite a few of these. Sales staff come in around about 54,000 a year and senior business analysts. And a number of years ago, I used to be a senior business analyst for an insurance company. Get paid on average 126,000 Australian. So from your $100 which are paying in premiums, we now have to deduct the regular staff wages. This is AIG headquarters, which is located in Sydney CBD. Well, it's very nice, it's very modern. This looks like the building has been retrofitted. It's been gutted and rebuilt entirely at some stage. Here's a bit of a lounge area in the AIG building. It's all blue, it's all very nice. It does seem to be some sort of mesh going on there, which is pretty ugly in my eyes. I'm not sure what that is. This is the AIG building itself. Rather tall, and yes, you're paying for that. And here is the solutions bar. What? Solutions bar? Somehow I think AIG thinks that they're Apple. And yes, it's a nice place to meet, have a cup of coffee, and your insurance premiums are paying for all of this. So from your $100 that you're paying in premiums, we now have to deduct all the building expenses, which no doubt are pretty high. What about commissions? Well, if you have a man that you go to who you get your insurance with, he will be earning a commission. If you go to a broker, they'll be earning commissions. But how much do they earn? Well, according to an Australian company, brokers, broadly speaking, will be paid a commission somewhere between 10% and 25%. Even if you don't use a broker or an agent, you actually may be paying commissions and not even realise it. Coles Insurance. Coles, as in the supermarket, they have an insurance arm. However, they don't really because it's actually backed by Insurance Australia. Essentially, Coles is a reseller for Insurance Australia. So yes, they're getting the commission. So you're thinking to yourself, I'm not using an insurance broker or an agent, but you're signing up with Coles, who's actually acting like an agent. So a lot of times, yes, you are. So from your $100 in premiums, we now have to deduct 10 to 25% in commissions. Can you give me some examples of how much insurance companies actually can pay out and how much is their profit? Well, yes, I can. In America, they looked at the 25 largest, most profitable insurance companies and how much they're actually making on their premiums. Assurant was actually paying out 51.72%. The rest of the money they're keeping entirely to themselves. Allstate Insurance was paying out 55%. The other 45% they keep. How are they making so much profit? Well, in insurance companies, there are entire departments whose sole job it is to reject your claims. I'm not kidding. As reported by the AARP, which is in the US, 14% of all submitted medical claims are rejected. That's one claim in seven. In Australia, it can actually even be worse. ASIC, so Australia, made a comparison of rejection rates amongst insurers as examined, but it kept the actual names of the insurer anonymous. But here we have the data below. Total or permanent disability, that's what TPD stands for. This is between 2013 and 15. Company A rejected 37% of all claims. 37%, that's like a third of all claims rejected. Who is company A? Well, ASIC has chosen not to disclose, but it's a real company and there is the data in front of you. Company B rejected 25% of all claims, that's a quarter, and so on down the list. So you have to factor in from your $100 that you're paying in premiums, seven to 37% of that will be rejected if you try to make a claim. Getting your insurance claim rejected is serious business and it's a massive problem for most people because of this. You've been paying out high premiums year after year, decade after decade, and for whatever reason, suddenly gets rejected. Do you have enough money now to fund your own liability, to fix what's gone wrong? No, because you've been paying out the money in insurance fees, and now it's rejected. So it's actually a gamble. You are left with nothing if your insurance claim gets rejected, and that's a big risk. How is this happening? How do insurance companies get away with just rejecting your claims? Well, one of the ways is through the disclosure rules. When you apply for an insurance policy or renew or extend your existing policy, you have to tell the insurer everything about you, and I do mean everything, that is relevant or could reasonably be expected to be relevant to the insurer's decision to insure you. 
if you do not provide accurate or comprehensive information at the relevant time, the insurer may be able to reject your claim. This is a loophole and it's one of the ways that insurers get you. You filled out a form a year ago and it asked you 27 questions and you just answered them to the best of your ability. No, one of the things you said was slightly wrong, therefore your claim is rejected. What, what about all the insurance I've been paying over the last 10 years when I've used the same set of answers? So I'm not gonna get paid out. Should I get all my insurance premiums refunded to me because they were never gonna pay out if I made a claim? Well, the answer is no. Too bad, you've lost your money with your insurance premiums and they're not gonna pay you out now, but you don't get a refund. Here is a real life insurance quote I did just now, especially for this video. This is GIO and I'm signing up for a car insurance. So here's my hypothetical car. It is a 2012 BMW 325i. This is not the actual car I own, but it's a 10 year old car and I've chosen it for a specific purpose. Here are the questions they asked. Does your car have any of the following? Hail damage? No. My hypothetical car is right with that. Windscreen or windscreen glass damage? Well, if it has a little chip out of the windscreen, do I have to disclose that? And if I don't, will my claim get rejected? Well, possibly. Accident or panel damage where paint is removed. What happens if I backed in to the letterbox and there's just a little bit of paint taken off? Do I have to disclose that? Or is it so small that they'll never know? Well, you could get your claim rejected. Scratches more than 10 centimeters long. Well, it's a 10 year old car. It could have, I don't really know. Rust areas more than four centimeters. Well, maybe not on the body, but if I look underneath, yeah, there could be some rust there. I have no idea. Okay, on average, how many kilometers do you drive in a year? Well, how do I'm supposed to know about that? Up to 15,000, who knows? You do, and you have to know, otherwise you're actually failing to disclose information to the insurance company. Is your car driven three or more weekdays, on average, between the following peak times? Now, yes, maybe you're driving to work. In three months time, you actually changed your job and you catch the train into the city and you walk to the station. Do you have to phone up your insurer and say, oh, my conditions have changed. My answer to that question is no longer the same. Yes, you do. If you don't, then you could have problems if you make a claim. In the last three years, has the main driver had any car related claims? Three years, well, there was that auto accident that you had, was that three and a half years ago? Was that two and a half years ago? I hope you're keeping notes because if you answer this wrong, absolutely, this can get your claim rejected. This is one actually one of the major things. How much is my 10 year old BMW gonna be covered for? They calculated 15,800. So from our $100 which we paid in insurance premium, you have to deduct any claims that get rejected because you accidentally forgot to disclose something. That's duty of disclosure. But do you know when you sign up with insurance premium, there's a number of things which actually aren't covered. The fine print. In this comprehensive car insurance, which I did the quote for, any damage caused by your windscreen is actually not covered by an insurance policy. You have to pay a separate $1,400 just to cover your windscreen. Also, what's not covered in this insurance premium, if you put the wrong fuel in, if you put diesel in your petrol car or vice versa, too bad, you've got an insurance policy, but no, you're not covered for that. Leaving your car unintended, unlocked with the keys left in the car, You've pulled up in your driveway and you're just popping inside for a second because you forgot your wallet, right? Your wallet contains your license, so you need that. Well, your car gets stolen and it's only there for 30 seconds, but too bad, definitely you'll not get covered for that. No, it doesn't matter if you've been insured for 10 years, that is your own fault and you won't get that claim. On home and contents insurance, flood cover, definitely you don't get covered for that. So. Water that comes down from the sky, you get covered from if it comes up from the ground. So even drains which are overflowing, no, you don't get covered for that. Accidental damage. If one of your kids is driving around the house on their bike and they run into something, no, you don't get covered for that. Animal damage. Damage caused by domestic cats or dogs, no, you don't get covered for that. Fido gets too excited and actually runs for a window and smashes it, no, too bad. That's your and Fido's problem. Renovation, this is a fascinating one which most people don't know. If you're renovating your home, you may need to let your insurer know. Most insurers don't cover damage caused by a connection with the renovations. We've updated our house a number of times. We redid the bathroom and did we let our insurance know? No, we didn't, but you really do need to because if anything goes wrong, no, you're not covered. Home businesses, if you run a business from home, you may need to let your insurer know because if there's damage to your stock, that could be a problem. So from our $100 premium, we have to deduct factors which are not covered. There's quite a few of those. 
this is really looking not very good. Of my original $100 in premium, it's deduction after deduction after deduction. How much am I getting back? Well, not a whole lot. This is because the house always wins. No, that's not your home which you've insured. The house in this case is the insurance company. Over a number of years, you have a 100% chance of getting less back from your insurance company than you pay into it. It's just like playing the pokies. Sebastian St. James insurance claims. These are my actual real claims. Home insurance. I own my own home, have done for decades. Never claimed on insurance. Contents insurance. Never claimed on it, not in my entire life. Car insurance. Claimed. I am a safe driver, but we went out on a day trip and a kangaroo jumped in front of the car. We braked and just clipped it. The kangaroo jumped away, but there was damage to the car. Whose fault is that? Was the kangaroo's fault? No, the kangaroo is not another driver and therefore that is a claim against my insurance. Life insurance via super. Early on, I did have life insurance on a super policy, never claimed. Out of the insurances which I've listed on this video, there may be other insurances I have, only one of those was claimed. The rest of these insurances, I may as well take my money, get a lighter, set it on light because I never see a penny of it back and quite likely never will. So from your $100 in premiums, we have to deduct the policies that you never ever claim against. I said having an insurance policy is like playing the pokies. In reality, it's actually a lot worse. In Australia, the payout ratios for pokies have to be by law between 85% and 90%. With insurance, am I likely to get back 85 to 90% like I do in the pokies? No, you won't. It'll be many times worse than that. In both cases, the house always wins. If the return on insurance is worse than playing the pokies, which it certainly is, is there a better way? Is there a secret that you're holding out from me, Sebastian, that could solve this for me? Well, yes, there is. That I will reveal in my next video on insurance. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that. We've just discussed car insurance, but can you claim your car as a tax deduction? Well, maybe. Click here to find out.